What is your name, please? My name is Baron Ladislao de Toro. What is your name, please? My name is Baron Ladislao de Toro. What is your name, please? My name is Baron Ladislao de Toro. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Baron Ladislao de Torac, and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and good, good evening to you. This, as you know, is our game of deliberate misrepresentation in which four presumably smart people try to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Healy. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> now, these three people all claim to be Baron Ladislaw de Torak. Only one, of course, is the real Baron Ladislaw de Torak. The other two have assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, in front of you, you will find a copy of an affidavit. Will you please follow along as I read it? I, Baron Ladislao de Torak, am Hungarian. I hold the degree of Doctor of Law from Budapest University. During World War II, I was a captain of horse cavalry on the Russian front. After the war, I went to Italy, where, for services to the church, Pope Pius XII awarded me the decoration I am now wearing. Currently, I am working at the Monseigneur restaurant in New York as a bartender. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Baron Ladislao de Torak. Now, we'll start our game in just... Okay, it's time now to play our game. These three people all claim to be Baron Ladislao de Torak. Remember, only the real Baron Ladislao de Torak is required to answer your questions truthfully. Now, each of you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will each be required to register your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Baron Ladislao de Torak. And we'll start this first round tonight with the uh, High Garden. Hi. Well, uh, number one, how would you order a vodka on the rocks in Hungarian? Oh, I put in the on the rocks a vodka. No, I mean, uh, I mean, say it in, in Hungarian. Hungarian uh, vodka is an uh, international name. Made by Russia, first time. They said vodka. You put on the vodka on the rocks. That sounds like a double one. <laughs> uh, uh, number two, what do you call a cocktail made from brandy and champagne? Manhattan. And number three, what do you call it? Made from champagne and brandy. What's the name of the drink? Champagne cocktail. Uh, number one, do you know the name of uh, the combination of brandy and champagne? What do you call it? Champagne cocktail. Mary Healy. Well, that last question has thrown me. I don't think any of them know how to make it. <laughs> All right, I'll go on with my questions. When you were in Rome, tell me, did you meet His Holiness? Uh, would you call by number? Number one, I'm First. sorry. Then I see Rome. Did you meet His Holiness, Puss Pius? Yes, sure. Pus pa I'll go out and come in again. <laughs> did you meet Pope Pius XII? Yes, 1951. Yes. Uh, where is his summer residence, number two? Uh, Castel Gandolfo. Number three, have you been in St. Peter's in Rome? Yes. Yeah. What is the magnificent statue on the right as you walk into the cathedral? Do you know the name of it? I can't recall. Yeah. Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number one, um, what physical fact makes Budapest different from every other city? The Danube, the, Danube, the river of the Danube. And what about it? That's going uh, right through the city and make an exactly part of one part of Pest and other part of Buddha. Uh-huh. Uh, number three, on what lake is Castel Gandolfo? Number one. What lake? What lake? Number two. Garda. Lake Garda. Kitty? Garda. Number one, you were in the cavalry. What kind of a horse did you ride? We ride the regular Hungarian horse. <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> I could say that's a horse on you, but I won't, kid. <laughs> Number two, what color is the Danube? Leaf? What color is the Danube? Danube is uh, blonde. It's blonde? Yes. <laughs> No, the Danube. The Danube. You, mean the pure, you mean the river. The color yeah. of the river, yes. Yes, it is uh, blonde, but uh, everybody tell it's blue. But uh -huh. it's not blue, it's blonde. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number three, are you obliged to talk to the customers as a bartender? No. Who are the most talkative, the women or the men? Men. Well, there we are. Now, before, we get, before we get into a hassle on that, it's time now to... Vote. So, panel, without consultation, if you will, mark your ballot and select number one, number two, or number three. May I point out something you probably already know, that uh, our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote, which means if they fool the entire panel, they may wind up dividing as much as $1,000. All right, panel, do you mark your ballot? Okay, Mary Healy, for whom did you vote? Number two. And why, Mary? Because he knew about Pope's summer residence, and he knew the lake that it was on. Uh-huh. Ralph? Number two. What was your reason? Uh, pretty much the same. He knew the lake, and um, uh, he seemed to know a little bit more about uh, the bartending business, too. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number two. He seemed like the noblest bartender of them all. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, hi, your vote was for... Number one. Uh, number two lost me when he wanted to make uh, a Manhattan with champagne. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and number, number one, when he was standing up there, had uh, uh, one hand in his pocket and the other hand free, and most bartenders like to leave one hand free to slip into the cash register. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. The votes are all in now. I hope your reasons are as good as ours were. <laughs> If not, we'll find out shortly because we are now about to learn which one of these distinguished gentlemen is the equally distinguished Baron Bartender. So will the real Baron Ladislao de Torak please stand? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, number two, will you tell us who you really are? You drew the most votes, incidentally. Who are you really and what do you do? My name is Emil Lindenfeld. I am an artist. I will have my first exhibition in the United States in the Colosseum from 4 May to 12 May. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> I trust it will be a very successful showing. Thank you. Number three, who are you and what do you really do? My name is Sam Margoli, and I am dance instructor at Arthur Murray. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how we did now. We had exactly one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Jared Hall for you gentlemen to divide and enjoy, I trust. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Good night and good luck to you. All right, may we have our next team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is Carol Morris. What is your name, please? My name is Carol Morris. What is your name, please? My name is Carol Morris. All right, panel. There's another copy of an affidavit in front of you again. All right, hi, stop staring now. Come on and follow along in the affidavit. Okay. <laughs> follow along as I read this affidavit, please. I, Carol Morris, was raised the daughter of a minister in Ottumwa, Iowa. As a girl, I studied the violin, and for two years, I played viola with the Des Moines Symphony Orchestra. My hobby is swimming, and in 1954, I broke the Junior Olympic backstroke record. Last year, in competition with 83 girls from 35 countries, I won the title Miss Universe of 1957. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Carol Morris. 
Now, we'll learn the truth about these three lovely challengers in just a few minutes. Let's get on with our game. These three lovely ladies all claim to be Carol Morris, the current Miss Universe. Now, again, remember that only the real Carol Morris is sworn to answer your questions truthfully. We'll start this round with uh, Ralph Bellamy. Ralph, please. Well, I don't know very much about uh, swimming or uh, <laughs> beauty contests, but I do know a little bit about Des Moines. I had a stock company there years ago at the old Princess Theater, so I'm going to try a few questions on Des Moines. Number three, on what streets is the Savory Hotel in Des Moines? Every hotel's on the main street. I didn't hear you. The main street. What's the name of it? Main street. Number two, what streets uh, is the Savory Hotel on? I think it's on Prince Street. Number one. I don't know. You just don't know. Uh, what, uh, number three, what university is in Des Moines? Drake. And what... Sorry, Ralph. <laughs> Kitty? Number three, what are you doing now? I'm working for the Catalina Bathing Suit Company. I'm modeling their suits throughout the United States. Number two, uh, it says in your affidavit that you played the viola with the symphony. That's Can you name a viola solo by Johann Sebastian Bach? Uh, I'm not too familiar with Bach. I can name some others for you. Well, give me one, any one. Well, there was uh, Beethoven's fifth. Uh, number one. Is there any uh, regulations as to what kind of thing you wear in the, when you are Miss Universe in this kind of competition? The length of the bathing suit, or is there anything that you have to know to what you wear? Or can you wear anything that comes into your head? Oh, we wear uniform suits supplied by Catalina Flynn Suits. And they're all the same length? Hi, Gardner. Stop no, being dreamy and ask number one, uh, <laughs> number one, Kitty Carla just said, is uh, there anything you had to know? Is there anybody you have to know? <laughs> no. uh, number two, what is the name of the most famous newspaper in Des Moines, Iowa? The Des Moines Daily, uh, Daily News. What would you say, dear? Des Moines Daily News. Uh, number three, in what city did you win the title, Miss Universe? Long Beach, California. Uh, I believe you won a motion picture contract, is that true? That's right. With what studio? With Universal International. And what is the boss of that studio? Sir, I don't know that. Mary Healy. Uh, number two, do you know who the boss is of that studio? At Universal? No, I don't. Do you, number one? I believe it's Robert Palmer. Mm. Uh, number two, I would like to ask you if you have to have any specific qualifications to win Miss Universe? I mean, do you have to have singing talent or...? No, that's not important. Well, what is important? They want to see how uh, your poise, your beauty, your figure, and uh, your general personality. There we go again. Panel, once more, it's time to vote. Again, no consultation. And would you please mark your ballot? And in doing so, you will select, of course, number one, number two, or number three. Okay, panel, all marked. Yep. Mary, all set. For whom did you vote? I vote for number two. What was your reason, Mary? Well, because she had a pretty good answer for Kitty Carlisle, and also uh, uh, there was another reason which I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, while she's thinking, for whom did you vote? Number three. And your reason, Ralph? Well, she seemed to have uh, a little bit more accurate information about Des Moines, although not too accurate. I don't think she got around there too much. Kitty, for whom was your vote? Number three. She just looked like Miss Universe to me. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Hi? Well, I voted for number two. Uh -huh. No particular reason. I'll even settle for the losers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go now. We've got our minds made up, our votes and our reasons given. You can be discussing it at home and figure out whether you're going to beat the panel or not do as well. Let's see how we did, shall we? Because right now, we're going to find out which one of these three lovely ladies is the real current Miss Universe. So now, will the real Carol Morris please stand up? Thank 
Thank you very much, Miss Morris. I may say Miss Morris is a pretty tired gal. She's been moving around so much she's had no sleep since Sunday. And it's a good thing she's keeping her eyes open here for us tonight. Thank you very much. Number two, uh, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? I'm Tony King, a hat check girl at the living room. <laughs> Makes you want to go there, doesn't it? And number three, tell us who you are. My name is Claire Nelson. I'm a vocalist, and I'm making my first recording this week for Epic Records. Oh, good luck to you. <laughs> well, that was fun, and they really fooled your panel. You know what that other answer was? I mean, that other reason? I remember now, she was the one that said Mr. Palmer, and I should have known because he's the talent scout, isn't he? Mr. Palmer? Mr. Palmer. Well, he was one of the judges in the Miss Universe contest, and he's the only one I've gotten to know that... She was playing, <laughs> playing that one real safe. You should have given me the answer. Well, you played it safe all the way down the line, challenges, because you have fooled the entire panel, and therefore there is a total of $1,000 from Jared Hall for you lovely ladies to uh, divide among you. Thank you very much. Much success to you all. Hope you enjoyed your Good night. May we have our third team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is John Hall. What is your name, please? My name is John Hall. What is your name, please? My name is John Hall. All right, panel, there we have our third team of challengers. Will you please follow along with your copy of this affidavit as I read it aloud? I, John Hall, a native of Ohio, have spent the past four years tracking big game in Africa. I have, to my credit, 30 elephants, 50 buffalo, and scores of lions, leopards, and rhinos. After a hitch in the United States Navy, I attended the University of Toledo and majored in business administration, which in no way prepared me for my present occupation as African safari guide and professional hunter. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, John Hall. Now we start our cross-examination in this round, and just three people all claim to be John Hall, the African hunting guide. So again, will you question until you hear the signal? And let's begin this questioning round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number three, can you say anything in the language of the African native? Oh, me mean a Jewish Swahili. And what does that mean? I speak Swahili. Oh. Number two, what is a Kikuyu? Uh, Kikuyu is a tribe of uh, <clears throat> Africans, Kenyan tribe. Number one, are, do you object to women on safari? Not if they pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> what gives you the most trouble, the women or the big game? I better not answer that. My <laughs> employer might be listening. <laughs> number three, what sort of bore gun do you use for big game? 450, number two. Hi, guard. Uh, number two, if you were hunting redheads, mallards, or uh, teal, or what would you be hunting? Duck. Uh, also, number two, what animal would you say uh, runs fastest, the rhino, the buffalo, the lion, or the elephant? Between those animals. Between those animals. I think the buffalo. The buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, who is Osa Johnson? An explorer. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's the same answer I would have given. Uh, number uh, one, what is the blade? And I don't mean as a weapon. I mean uh, in relation to the Ohio... The city that you come from. That's the newspaper. Uh, Mary Healy. Uh, in Ohio, what are the uh, restaurants that are named after an animal? In all of Ohio, ma'am? Yes, <laughs> number one. Oh, that's too many restaurants in Ohio. I well, there's one in particular. Number two, do you know? Well, I'm afraid I must make the same answer. Number three, would you take a guess? No. All right. Well, we traveled in Ohio one time for a long time, and we always ran into the same restaurants. They were called the Purple Car. <laughs> At any rate, uh, my husband recently sat in, Peter Lynn Hayes just sat in for Arthur Godfrey, who went on a safari. You weren't by any chance one of the guys, number one, were you? No, ma'am. He was with another organization. Uh, can an African elephant be trained? No. Uh, Ralph? Uh, number three, what's the population of Africa? I haven't the faintest. <laughs> <laughs> number one, you know. 
I couldn't guess that either. Number two. Well, I'd have to guess. Well, what'd you guess? Yeah, I think it's about 180 million. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, if you were going to cross Africa by uh, boat and portage, about the center of Africa, what three rivers? A beginning about Luanda, would you navigate? I'd certainly use the Congo at, uh, on the western side. That's about the only possibility. To Elizabethville. Well, it's kind of a long portage, but I suppose uh, if I... If it was, Long portages are allowed. I'd go up to the Apollo and go down. This is only a half-hour show, so we have to move on. Right. Did he? Um, what tribe do the Mau Maus belong to, number three? Kikuyu. Uh, what is, where is Nairobi, number one? Nairobi is the capital of Kenya in East Africa. Um, can you tell me the, pri the man who is now the head of Ghana, number two? Of Ghana? Of Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah. Um, number three, what do you prefer to hunt if you have um, your choice? Elephant. Elephant? Why is that? I find it the most exciting. Uh-huh. Also find it the most easy to find. That's all the time we have. It's time now to vote. <laughs> so will you please mark your ballot panel once again without consultation. And in so doing, select number one, Number two, or number three. Ballots all marked. Mary, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two. What was your reason, Mary? Well, my reason wasn't very good, excepting that he knew the name of that man who ran, what was that place you said? Guana. Guana. I don't know very much about Africa. <laughs> Ghana. Ghana. <laughs> Ralph, Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> number two. Why, Ralph? Well, it's, I don't know. It was really a toss-up between two and three, so far as I was concerned. But number two uh, almost answered the river question, and it's a tough one. <laughs> Never did get across the no. left in, in darkest Africa. <laughs> He's still on poor top. <laughs> Kitty, your vote was for? Number two. Oh, dear. <laughs> He's the one I want to go on safari with. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you leave right after the show, right? <laughs> well, I also voted for number two. I, I thought he had the cold blue eyes oh, of a hunter, good. and he <laughs> seemed to answer all the questions <laughs> <laughs> pretty rapidly. All right, now, <laughs> here we are. Everybody <laughs> anxious to see whether they were as right this time as they were wrong last time. So our votes are in. Are yours? Okay, then let's find out right now which one of these gentlemen is the real guide and big game hunter in Africa. <laughs> Will the real John Hall please stand up? <laughs> well, I must say, <laughs> Mr. Hall, Mr. he's so pale. And he doesn't have those steely blue eyes, and you don't want to go on portage with him. <laughs> Thank you very much. So number one, tell us who you really are and what you do. My name is Ezra Bond, and I'm the boating, skiing, and outdoor editor for Sports Illustrated magazine. <laughs> oh, and you who garnered all the bo all the boats, I'm going to say boats, and still in the river over there, tell us who you really are and what you do. My name is Blair Fuller. I'm the author of a recent novel, A Far Place, and a teacher of English at Barnard College. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. And we see that for the second time tonight, we've fooled our entire panel. There's $1,000 in Jared Hall for you gentlemen to divide. Good night to you all, and the best of good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm afraid, panel, that's all we have time for tonight, except to say good night. Good night, panel. Good, good night. night. Good night, bud. <laughs> and remember what I told you about Geritol, a high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Right now, this is Bud Collier saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night. Invitation <laughs> for to tell the truth is arranged by American Airlines. Guests that flown to New York aboard American famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury.
So Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.